So, Kai, if you are online, please. Yes, I'm online. I will start sharing my. Okay. Do you see my screen? And perfect. can you hear me? Okay. Go ahead. Oh, perfect. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Kanye Tu. I'm from the super, uh, from the group of Professor Kari Grissan at the University of Uvescular in Central Finland. And our group is um, working on the structural characterization of Cairo systems in solid state. And the talk today is about complexation studies of uh, the host and porphyrin receptors, which we have already heard this morning by um, Chris and Karelis and also Lucas a little bit. Um, so to get the most information that we want to have, um, get it from different phases, the liquid phases, as Lucas has talked about the NMR, CD, UV vis spectroscopy, um, of course, also the gas phase. If you do some quantum cal uh, chemical calculation, mass spectroscopy uh, metry, which is quite interesting. And then, of course, the solid state. Um, and there we can distinguish between amorphous and crystalline materials. And we are interested uh, in the in the crystalline materials, um, where we can then do some, some um, yeah, single or powder um, X-ray um, investigations here at our university. Um, so the compounds that we are investigating have been provided by our initial collaborators. Most of them have been provided by um, the AF uh, group and also from the single group. So how do we start with experiments? So as I said, we don't do the synthesis, but we do a lot of crystallization work and how it's go, uh, what we are doing there, are we are using different techniques and I will explain you the most common techniques that we are using here. So it's the solvent evaporation. Um, so it's usually under air at room temperature, but we can also, we have also done it at a lower temperature. Um, if you use some solvent which, which has high uh, boiling points or low vapor um, pressure, you can also get some, some um, apparatus like here, uh, where you can then use vacuum in a controlled way. Uh, to crystallize your solvents. Then, of course, you have the solvent diffusion layering technique where you have, for example, in the lower phase, your um, component A in the upper phase in a different solvent, the component B, and then the immediate, you usually have a mixture, intermediate uh, layer of both uh, solvents, where then we get a slow diffusion of both components, and at some point, we will, the product is crushing out um, because it's not soluble anymore in either of those solvents. The same principle is happening in the vapor diffusion. Um, you can also use solvent thermal reaction, sublimation, convection, many, many different other ways how to get your crystalline material. It's also very important about the temperature, the concentration, the reaction vessel, of course, pH value, things like this can have a big influence. So it's a huge trial and error um, that you have to do. So that's why it's always a step one. If you have now been able to get something crystalline, um, we distinguish usually between single crystal. This is an enlarged uh, picture of some crystalline material that uh, I've obtained during this initial project, but it can also be some kind of a powder, which is a, yeah, a collection of several single micron um, sized um, crystals, single crystals. So depending on which kind of uh, material you have now, you can of course use now the powder X-ray diffraction. Uh, you can always measure infrared spectroscopy with either of them. You can do the solid state NMR. 
But what we are interested in is the single crystal X-ray diffraction with a, here we can see a really nice um, single crystal powder pattern, how it looks like if you have uh, a perfectly single crystal. So the overview, we have heard this morning already a lot about hemicucubaturals, especially the cyclohexyl hemicucubaturals, uh, the metalloporphyrins uh, this morning, um, and then the third component, uh, which we are interested in, are of course the analytes, um, especially the chiral analytes. What I'm going to talk now, step by step, is to see uh, the the single combinations of them. So first the host gas binding between the uh, HCs with the analytes, the host gas binding between metalloporphyrins of analytes, um, some building blocks that we can form either covalent or non-covalent. And then what we want to aim, of course, is something here in the middle, uh, which I will talk at the end. So I will not talk too much because uh, Lucas has gave us a very nice introduction about um, our used chiral macrocycles. I just want to point out that we have again uh, upper and lower, so two portals where the molecules can go into the cavity. We have apolar uh, regions, we have then these chiral um, chiral moieties, for example, we have talked about the all RR uh, enantiomers, but also the all SS enantiomers, and then the polar region here uh, at the belt where we have the carbonyl um, um, groups. Um, we have also tried to do everything what I'm going to talk about with the biotin 6 euro, but it's quite difficult to get some single crystals with a two or three component because even the, the biotin 6 ural itself and the crystal structure, it is quite heavily disordered, which means that the um, group chains here are very, have different positions where it could be. Um, I have shown here, for example, only the, the one with the main uh, occupancy. Um, our group and us group has been successful in the past years with um, selective bindings of anions inside the cavity um, of here the HC6, uh, HC8 um, macrocycle uh, with, a, with a six membered ring. It is not possible there, it is only possible to get some very, very tiny uh, molecules inside like water. Uh, methanol um, or dichloromethane um, molecules. With the eight-membered ring, we have been able to caption and get some bindings of small heterocyclic molecules, like for example now here tetrahydrofurane, dihydropurane, um, dioxane, uh, one four thioxane, and one three dithiolane. Uh, this works for both. Uh, enantiomer, so all RR and all SS. So these are but these are not the target molecules that we want to caption uh, inside the cavities or at all. Uh, so the chiral targets are listed here and you can see that they are much bigger than the ones that uh, we have been able to, to bind. Um, but these molecules are also not very, uh, so maybe also too big for our systems that we want to, to test uh, for as a trial. So what we have done is we have used some model um, analytes which has some, some yeah, functional groups that we can find in our, our target molecules. Like for example, what happens if we have a molecule with hydroxy groups? What happens if, sorry, what happens if we have some groups with um, carboxylic acid groups? Um, uh, methoxy groups and so on. So what we have done is we have used our um, cycle um, hexyl hemicubitorial 6 and 8, uh, not only for the R enantiomers, but also the all SS enantiomers and tried to 
see what happens with some guests if we um, if we uh, if we crystallize them. And the possible bounds that we have thought about is okay, either one of the group or two, or maybe even the whole um, whole molecule is going inside the cavity. The second one is that it's only having some some contact at the apolar re region. We have also seen that it's possible to caption some anionic um, um, yeah, anions uh, inside. So what about a salt? And then of course, uh, a third one is because we have here the carbonyl groups, maybe we can get some kind of a hydrogen um, bond. And the most interesting result that we have uh, was with quinoline. Uh, here's the structure where we have what is so it's a chiral molecule with uh, methoxy groups, hydroxy groups, um, and also vinyl groups. Um, and, and for this structure, we have seen that we can find the binding modes B and E, which is, um, yeah, one, one functional group is um, binding to the apolar region, which you can see here, which is the vinyl um, group. But we have also, as I said, with uh, D, the hydroxy group here with typical uh, hydrogen uh, bonding uh, distances and uh, angles. Um, this morning, the group uh, in Dublin have talked quite a lot about porphyrin, so I won't go too much into detail here. Um, I just wanted to say that, <laughs> thank God that I didn't have those 900 uh, porphyrins to test as uh, Chris talked about. Uh, so in total, I have received um, only 75 uh, uh, porphyrins or metalloporphyrins, and we have tried to crystallize them. Some of them were already known in the Cambridge Structural Database. Some were new, and uh, we had a closer look at the structure. Some were uh, the tetra roles that were planar, um, and then some with uh, if we have different uh, groups here at the R1 or R2 or the meso and beta um, positions, it can also be that it's not planar anymore and then we get those settle or I call them Pringle type of uh, crystal uh, structures um, where it's not planar anymore. And especially those non-planar um, uh, porphyrins were not interesting for us, our studies for the next one, which you can see here. Uh, only the planar uh, metalloporphyrins were interesting, um, where we have uh, mixed together one of these uh, metalloporphyrins with our HC um, uh, cyclohexa uh, hemicucubaturals. Um, and we have been able to get, as you can see, third. Yeah, you, I haven't shown all of the structures, uh, but you can see here some examples. Um, so in total, we got 39 X-ray structures. Uh, what we have done is we have mixed one equivalent with of the metalloporphyrins with the um, with the HC, uh, one equivalent in methanol DCM. These are the structures. Although we have always used a one-to-one -one ratio, not all um, products that we received were one-to-one. -one. So of course, here on the right side, we can see one-to-one -one complexes, but sometimes we have also seen a, a two-to-one or even a, a two-to-three um, discrete complexes. Um, sometimes we have also seen, especially for the six-membered um, HCs, uh, we observe uh, one-dimensional linear chain polymers. For the magnesium TTP, we have even observed a helical form um, type of a coordination polymer, which could be interesting to study with, um, with uh, CD. Uh, yes. So the comparison between the all RR and all SS structures, we can say that in 70% of the structures that we have observed for the six and eight members rings, um, macrocycles, it's always uh, the same structure that we observe, but then 
For some, we, ha we have observed that they are a little bit different. For example, these combinations, uh, cyclo HC6 with zinc TTP here on the upper hand. So if we go with uh, all RR enantiomer, we get a one-dimensional coordination polymer uh, where it alternates here um, the macro cycle. If we are going to the all SS, we have seen that it's not alternating, but we can also still get the one dimensional coordination polymer, or even if we uh, change the, the solvent uh, mixture, we can even get a one-to-one -one ratio with one um, co-crystallized um, HC6 molecule. And then the same has uh, occurred for zinc uh, TPP with a para uh, fluor atom. Um, here we have a one-dimensional, here we have a discrete uh, two to two complex. Um, and then for zinc OAP, we have seen this one before in the previous slide with the uh, two to three uh, complex. And then for the SS enantiomer, we can get these. This, um, this structure where we have a two to one complex. Um, the same happens, but not so we haven't found a lot of differences for the zinc um, HC8. There we have only found one with zinc OAP. Um, here for all RR we have a 2 to 1 complex. And here we have also a 2 to 1 complex, but this time it's the only one where we have found a two-dimensional coordination polymer, uh, po polymeric structure. Uh, I have also tried to to use different stoichiometries to see if we can change the outcome of directions, uh, but unfortunately, no. So I have also repeated all those reactions and it also always appears to form these um, structures at these special reaction conditions that I've used. Um, so at, after that, I have done a, I have, um, done a histogram of all the distances between the metal and the oxygen to see if we can do a if we can summarize something up. Um, so in general, we can we can see that the distance are between 2.1 uh, and 2.5, uh, but there are also some some exceptions where the bond distance are very, uh, very short or very, very long here in this um, example. And in th so we can sum up in general that if something is quite, if the distance between the metal and oxygen is quite short, um, it is usually because of the discrete complexes. So we have a five coordinated metal, cat uh, metal cation, uh, which especially features the, um, HC8 uh, macrocycle. Um, if we find if we find longer distances, it's usually because of the coordination polymer where we have six coordinated um, uh, six coordinated metal cation in a octahedral geometry, and there it's usually with the cyclo HC6. If you want to be more strict, you can even divide it into three parts, so this is one part and, and this is one part and here in the middle as well. Here in this middle, you can even find uh, discrete uh, complexes featuring cyclo XC6 molecules. Um, so we have talked now quite a lot about, um, yeah, coordination uh, complexes and uh, polymers. But how about the conjugates that, which are much uh, more stable? Unfortunately, we have not been able to get any single crystals for these structures. Um, it's the same reason for the biotin 6 euro. Um, we have here this alkyl chain, which uh, gives us quite a lot of um, uh, flexible uh, flexibility of the molecule and the self-assembly and especially getting some um, 
some solid state, uh, so some crystalline material is quite difficult uh, in this sense, or some single crystals. That's why we haven't been able to, to get any, any uh, structure, molecular mm -hmm. structure until now yet. Um, as Lucas has explained already, he, they have found, uh, they have done some metalloporphyrin complexations with chiral analytes. Uh, we have also been able to do this, um, as you can see here for these two examples. One is the bis zinc OAP and one is the um, para uh, fluorinated uh, zinc TTP uh, molecule. So to summarize it up, uh, we have a quite big library of chemical materials uh, and metalloporphyrins and also some uh, conjugates as you have seen before. Um, so we have been able to do some complexation studies with two components, either with uh, hemicucubaturals and some analytes or some hemicucubaturals with some metalloporphyrins. Um, and it seems to be that the, the eight, um, eight member uh, microcycle is the best choice uh, to do that, to even yeah, have some, some kind of interaction inside of the cavity. The six member ring is too, too small. Um, so then we have seen that there are some differences between the, the there could be some differences between the solid state structures of the um, all RR and the all SS structures. Uh, the choice of solvents is very important and um, yeah, these X-ray structures are, can help us to understand um, the different uh, binding uh, modes between the receptor and the analytes later on. Um, of course, we will not do it in, in solid state, but more, most likely in solution or in gas phase. So it can only help to understand uh, later uh, how it goes. Now, the last point that we haven't talked about is uh, the combination to get a ternary complex. Uh, there we have also been uh, successful to get a few examples here in the lower part I have shown you a few binding modes of course it's not there are even more so here you can only see a one to one to one um, uh, component or complex uh, of course it could be a two to one, one to one or something like this um, but in general it agrees and confirms the observations that we have seen before so we can see some complexation um, of the metalloporphyrin with uh, HCs, uh, one to one or one dimensional coordination polymer or even a two to one. And depending on uh, what molecules we're using, for example, here, uh, the hydrofurate, it, it's quite small, it's heterocyclic, so it can go inside. But we have also seen, depending on the stoichiometry, that it can be outside as well. Uh, if we are using bigger molecules like ethyl benzene, it's too big to go inside the cavity. Um, so we, we only find it outside where it does some, some um, which has some context uh, with, the, with the apolar um, regions of the uh, HCs. And then if we are going for eugenol, which has a, which has a hydroxy group, uh, we have already seen, the, like with uh, uh, quinine, uh, that um, it can form some hydrogen bond here with a carbonyl group um, outside. So for the outlook, um, I, we have seen that only small molecules can go inside the microcycles uh, and only in the eight-membered uh, HC. So recently, um, AFS Group has uh, published uh, this article about the cyclohexyl hemicuperture tool um, 12, um, which is much bigger um, macrocycle, and it looks promising that even bigger molecules can go inside this cavity. 
Um, so we are looking forward to analyze these. Of course, we, sh we will do some more post guest studies with the conjugates. We will try to do some more ternary complexes, um, especially with the, not only model analytes, but also with the uh, target analytes. Um, and then for those structures which we couldn't get single crystals, we do some, some um, solid state NMRs. Um, some powder X-ray diffraction, um, but we we can we should also try to do some um, uh, mass spectrometric uh, analysis. At the end, I like to show you our team. So it's our supervisor uh, and group leader Kai Rissanen from the JYU team, then me as a postdoc and. Jess, who has worked for three months uh, to, to solve and help uh, crystallizing those, um, those structures that I've shown before. At the end, I'd like to thank uh, Initio and the university and the European um, Commission to grant us um, the opportunity to, yeah, to perform this research. Um, and I'd like to thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kai, uh, for the nice presentation. There are, as you can see, uh, three questions in the chat. I don't know if you, if you can answer to them. Okay, from Lukas, yeah. Yes, I agree. Um, So the, the, the distance between the cyclo HC6 is much longer because, as I said, they are usually doing some, some coordination polymers where we have six coordinated metal. Um, uh, so this is not happening with the eight member ring. Um, of course, then, because we have only uh, yeah, five coordinate, the, the distance is much longer because the metal is not sitting in the central position of the, the porphyrin anymore, but it can move out of the of the plane. So it, it moves more or less to the to the um, yeah to the carbonyl group of the of the uh, macrocycle, and that's why the, the, the distance is is shorter in those um, those um, yeah discrete complexes and not uh, not a one dimensional or two dimensional complex. Okay, the another one. Any idea about the difference between SS and RR enantiomers? So if I only crystallize out the, the enantiomers by itself, I don't see any other, I, I don't see any, um, any differences. Um, I also don't see any difference if I use those smaller heterocyclic um, compounds. Um, but as I said, we can see some, some uh, differences if we are coordinating it to the metalloporphyrins. Why it's like this, I haven't checked it properly yet. Um, what I have seen, like Lucas, is that um, we have these interactions of the methylene groups with the uh, uh, methylene CH groups and uh, pi um, interaction. Uh, if we are using some halogenated uh, derivatives of the perforins, we also see the CX uh, pi interaction and things like this. But uh, why it's different for the SS and RR, I have not checked it yet properly. So I will do it soon. Um, and then, but there are still in as complex. That's true. Yes, that's true. But there will be two. And to Carolis, 
Yes, I haven't tried it yet. Um, and I will try it. I will try it in the future. I hope I have answered now all questions. It would be interesting to I think, I think it's OK, Carrie. Thank you uh, for the nice presentation for the the answer to the question. So uh, we can close here the morning session of this webinar and uh, we will meet uh, again at the half past 2 p.m. for the afternoon session with the last talks. And thank you so much for your uh, attending to this uh, session. So we have uh, now the lunch break. Uh, we will uh, uh, meet again exactly at the half past two. Okay, bye.